I'm glad to be here again. It's my eighth time in Ukraine. And uh, it's amazing how people remember you. Like in that one time when I didn't, when I wasn't there, they asked, where, where is Agnes? So that makes you feel good. I found when we were at the rehab center that the men were more open and, and welcoming with us. They met with us and shared with us more. They kind of mixed with us more. And that, that was a big difference from even the very first time I came four years ago. I think any time a uh, searching soul is looking to get outside of, of him, him or his herself, uh, you need to go outside uh, your comfort zone. And uh, it's an investment in yourself and that you really realize just how much you rely on the creature comforts and the um, technology and the conveniences that we do have. And to see the difference in the happy barometer um, these people have nothing and yet they seem to be the most happiest and generous people uh, I've met. House visits. We had the first one where we went to with that lively lady who you said you enjoyed going to because she talks. Uh, as we walked in the room that she fell on her knees and spent at least three or four minutes praising God that she had a visitor. Uh, that humbled me because she was on her knees and then when she tried to get up she could hard, hardly get up. So I realized it was something that she wanted to do as a sacrifice of worship. This is the second time we went to visit the prison lady. We call her the prison lady but she works in the prison ministry and uh, she told us so many stories but what stuck out is uh, she told us her husband passed away last this year about six months ago and she thought she would she would move now and she says the Lord told her stop you stay right here where you are and uh, and she told us so many stories about the prisoners you can feel her love she is in the right place and she has the love of, of the Lord in her heart We visited a family with a little baby, a six-month-old, who has health issues which they cannot seem to get proper medical attention for. And because I have a granddaughter at home that has this incredible ability to access hospitals, specialists, machinery, she is able to, to do better and to watch this family who, who don't have the funds, the access, and, and just don't know what is wrong with their little girl. I, I, I found myself just feeling really frustrated and, and sad and, and wanting so much to, to do something about it. Tuesday at the children's banquet, I met a little girl by the name Alina with her mom. And they asked if we had a wheelchair. I said, we got wheelchairs, but I have to see if it's the size for her that was suitable for her. 
The next day we phoned her up and asked if she would come with the child and she came and they both said right away, we never have seen a real child like that. And they could choose which one was suitable for them and I had to exchange the backrest for them so she could fold the wheelchair and carry it up to the third floor. And they both were so happy that she had a wheelchair. What has really meant something to me in this trip was just seeing how God works through, through people and with people and, and just seeing his wonderful works in, in people. You know, we've seen great examples through the orphanage and, and uh, the rehab center and also the central church. You know, we've participated in a few services and you can really feel God's presence here in, in Nicopol and how he's working. But you can also see the other side where the devil's really working too hard in some people's lives. I just constantly am enthralled and, and in awe of their earnestness and their total trust and faith in that God will help them and God will guide them and everything will be okay.